Hi guys, it's Scott at Wood Lake Nature Center and today it's a beautiful winter day and we're going to take a look at animal tracks and sign. You can do this in your own backyard, become a track detective. All you need to know is a few things to look for in tracks. First is the animal's footprint size. If you look right down here, we've got some fairly small tracks and they're hopping and you can see that there's a definite triangular shape that would indicate a rabbit, a cottontail rabbit. And look where the rabbit's been going. Over here, let's walk over there. And you can see the rabbit's been spending a lot of time here. Look at all these little cocoa puffs. These little round brown cocoa puffs are rabbit scat. Those are its bathroom. And here, the rabbits have been chewing all the bark off of this stick. That's what rabbits eat in the wintertime. They eat the buds, which will be next year's leaves, and the bark on plants. So they've loved this bark, and so they're pooping out sawdust. That's all these little pellets are, is just sawdust. You can see it falls apart. Ooh, look at that. They poop out sawdust. These are frozen, and it's really not very yucky so it's just sawdust that's left from eating that bark and the bunnies have been hopping around all over here underneath these sticks which is good cover for them so that they don't get eaten by hawks and owls so let's go look down the trail further and see if we can find some other animal tracks Winter plays a big trick on the animals. In the summer, we really don't know where they go, but in the winter, they leave their tracks, scats, and other signs in the beautiful snow. Let's go see if we can find some more. Well, here we've got some bigger tracks. You'll see right next, oh, there's some people tracks here. You'll see people footprints, but right here, and then right here, see how far apart they are? That's the animal's gate, and I can see pads of what looks like a little dog footprint right there. You can see it compared to my hand. Pretty good sized dog. Any ideas what that could be? A coyote is right. These are coyote footprints. They almost go in a straight line. And let's see where the coyote was going. Oh, you can see it was heading down towards the marsh here. And we're gonna follow along next to those. Now we're coming with another track, almost the same size as the coyote, but look, it's got two toes. And it's walking, oh, here's a really good one right here. That would be the white-tailed deer. You can see the hoof mark makes a kind of a heart shape pointing in the direction he was going. And the snow is soft here, so you can see the other two toes because deer have four toes, the two primary toes and two smaller toes called dew claws back here. So the deer was walking right along here also. Notice the back foot and the front foot are almost in the exact same place. Notice the front foot is ahead, the back foot is just inside. That would indicate this was a buck. A buck deer has its back hind legs inside the front feet when it's walking, whereas the females, their back feet are a little farther out because they have wider hips. All right, let's keep going and see more deer tracks. <clears throat> oh, and here's where, remember when the bunny went to the bathroom? Well, here's some deer scat. Now this is unusual because deer are usually milk duds, little pellets. But this one had a little problem, and uh, so they tend to get kind of a diarrhea or sometimes have stool or scat that's, that's a big chunk like that. You can see it was trying to kind of form pellets, but it kind of came out in one big blob. Um, must have had a little tummy issue. Notice these smaller tracks here of an animal that can really jump, and where do they end up? At the tree. So what animal can climb trees? You guessed it, a squirrel. 
I wonder if there is a squirrel nest in one of these trees. Oh, there could be. Yep, there's a squirrel nest right up there made out of leaves. So if you see a nest in the trees that's pretty big and it's made of sticks and leaves, that's a squirrel nest. Of course, they can also live in hollow holes or cavities in trees. Maybe we'll see that too. Let's continue this way. And here there's lots of tracks. Oh, and here's, here's where the deer walked. You can see another big deer track here. And there's what their scat should look like. You see the little milk duds right there? Remember, rabbits are cocoa puffs. Deer are milk duds, a little bit bigger. And you can see they plop down in the snow. So the deer just stopped here a moment. There's its big tracks. And uh, they've been eating some of the buds and, and bark just like the rabbits do. There's also a rabbit scat right in that track. Oh, and look at this. The snow has all been melted here in a big patch that we call a deer bed. So a deer actually laid down here in its warm body. You can see the hairs right here. Those hairs fell out of the deer. I don't know if you can see those. The deer hair in the winter is thicker. It's actually a hollow hair that they grow in the winter to keep them extra warm. So they're thicker and you can see them very easily. But the deer laid here and its body heat melted the snow, leaving this bed right here. So this is where a deer would spend the night um, sleeping, just resting. And they get up and wander about, you know, early, early in the morning and, and just after dark in the evening. So lots of animal activity. You can see all the different tracks of deer um, and, and coyote and rabbits and squirrels. Let's go a little further here. Right here, if you look off here, Oh, there's some more coyote tracks, but I don't know if you can see very well. There's little pieces of wood shavings, like sawdust, all over the top of the snow here. So where would that come from? Well, if you look up the tree, whenever you see sawdust or wood on the ground, look up. Because look at the woodpeckers have been pecking all the bark off of that tree, eating little bugs that are living under the bark, and dropping those little tiny pieces of wood all over the snow. There's a perfect hole up there. Maybe a woodpecker will nest there this spring. That's really cool. And just a little bit further down here, I want to show you there's lots of tracks. Animals running all over out here. You may not have quite this much animal activity in your backyard, but, but look for them, you never know. And then right here, when I was out earlier today, you see that big hole in the tree right there? A squirrel was actually in that hole looking out at me. I wonder if the squirrel is still in there. It would be fun to see the squirrel's head in there. So we'll take another little bit of a walk and see if we can find some of the smaller creatures. So here we found some smaller tracks and you can find these in your backyard, especially if you have a bird feeder in the back. Notice there's two little footprints side by side. So it's a hopping animal and it's kind of a long track and it's very difficult to make out because the snow is so fresh but you can see the impression of three toes in the front and one in the back. And so it was hopping right here, hopping around, and it's from a bird. Yeah, birds two feet, they hop together. There's some other tracks here that we've seen before. Um, some scat of the rabbit under the bush and some little bunny tracks. So it's harder to see these, but 
little songbird tracks are really small and, uh, and just feet side by side as they hop along. So let's take a look over here because there's actually a bigger bird that's been here too. And you can see by the size of my footprint that it's a very large bird. And you can see the three front toes and the back toe right there. Can you imagine what bird has a big foot like this? It's a wild turkey, you're right. So the wild turkey has been walking around out here. And we've got really good impression of its footprint in the new snow that we had last night. Now we'll see if we can find some very elusive mouse tracks. Here we have a small mouse that has been tunneling under the snow. The mice live under the snow in what's called the subnivian layer where they can search for seeds that were dropped on the ground and they don't come out very often on top of the snow because that's very dangerous. There can be predators lurking above like hawks and uh, so they stay underneath and here you can see little cracks in the snow where the mouse was tunneling and just pushed the snow up just a little bit and then actually came out here and over here. You can see it was jumping on top of the snow, its back feet kind of gliding in, and you can see where its tail hit the snow. So a little tail drag right there. And then it hopped all the way over and actually went down in a hole underneath the cattails in the grass where it can hide. And under the snow, even if it's, uh, today's kind of a chillier day, um, just above zero, but under the snow, it rarely goes below 28 degrees because the snow is a great insulator. So this is a classic mouse trail so that you can look and uh, see mice tunneling around, maybe under your bird feeders or in your yard as well. So get outside, um, enjoy winter, and look for signs of the animals all around you.